Uh, today we're joined by Kayla, who is going to talk about her experiences. So uh, before we get going, could you just tell everybody about yourself a little bit? Well, I'm 36 or th almost 37 years old. I'll be 37 Tuesday. Um, I came out as transgender about two years ago. Um, kind of started life in Houston, Texas. Um, uh, grew up there. I, I worked overseas and stuff and then kind of came to California and then kind of like I said, like two years kind of came out and I had served with uh, Jordan. Um, I was actually just checking my calendar to double check, but um, it was actually roughly almost a year ago. It was like June, June 23rd of um, 2020. So wow. right on the year. Well, yes. that's great. Well, it seems like a good time to check in because uh, you probably see most of the results by this point. So, um, yes. so I guess uh you answered most of my basic questions. Uh, when you were researching uh, choosing a surgeon, uh, could you talk about what your process was and, and what sources you used? So I find kind of the internet to be kind of a challenging place to find good information because there's a lot of it, but I feel like a lot of it is, it's not really super helpful because you don't know how reliable it is. So luckily I have like a really, I had a really good gender therapist that I like worked with and she kind of helped with like basically kind of coming out like to me personally and then also like, you know, to my family and just in general and just like transition in general. And she was able to kind of like help steer me into like, to kind of guide me to like kind of a handful of, of different surgeons. And from that point, I kind of did my own research and then I did consults with certain ones. And then I kind of, I think the biggest kind of decider for me was looking at a surgeon that, that kind of fit um, this thing, like kind of like focus or goal that you kind of get out of it. Cause I think everyone has their own aesthetic, if you will. And I feel like kind of all my surgeries that they kind of have the same kind of outcome kind of goal or kind of same kind of, kind of thought process of the, of the procedure. And I think once you kind of get there, then you have that kind of trust. Yeah, that's, that is a big part of it. So how many consultations in total did you do? So I actually only did two. So I did one with uh, Kia Jumpa. Mm -hmm here in LA. And then, then I did with Jordan. And then once I basically when I did with Jordan and after like kind of the consult going through everything, and then also looking at like dates of scheduling, um, cost, um, just like kind of everything kind of like it kind of like all those things kind of came into that decision. And then pretty quickly after my consult with Jordan, I made the decision to kind of basically like go ahead with him. Uh -huh. And what would you say you felt like the difference was aesthetically between the two? Um, was well, interesting. I don't wish I knew better. Like, um, they had different ideas of what they would actually end up doing based on their experience. Cause it comes, I, I guess I went in kind of like kind of some background. It's like, I wanted to go in, I didn't have like, I want to look like this or I want X, Y, and Z procedures is what kept from what I read online. Like certain, some, some women kind of have a very prescriptive idea of what they wanted where for myself, I'm, I'm more like they're the expert. So kind of tell me what you think. That was kind of my thought process. And I guess going to both of them, saying both the same thing was very interesting. They both, some of the procedures were similar and some were different. And I thought that was interesting. And then also another thing that I really liked about Jordan, and I think kind of like goes into his thought process of, of that, is where like the article that he's in, in the um, New Yorker, where it talks about he's very scientific and very kind of, um, and I do feel like you kind of have to have that there's also like an artistry, I think, and you have to see like everyone has their own kind of like some are a little bit more, um, I don't know the right word. They're a little more out, like it's a little more plastic, not say plastic surgery, but it's a little more in your face, I guess, or a little bit more over the top. I don't know if I'm using the right words, but no, I know like some, yeah, it's, it's hard more, to describe, you know, because yeah. when we're talking about aesthetics, it's a very subjective thing. Exactly. We're, and then the other ones are more, I would say, say more the way Jordan described it which I really liked it was like basically it was more you know you're not turning into like Kylie Jenner or like you know you know one of these like different kind of like celebrities you're really turning into your face just feminizing more of what you would have looked like you know had you not had the testosterone and different hormones kind of making those changes and and I really like that that's really what something that kind of drew me to Jordan especially because I, I just felt that's kind of what I wanted because uh -huh. I didn't want it this kind of overdone or kind of you know, pushed into one way, or I really like that kind of thought of like enhancing myself, but just making it more feel like it was me. And I feel like that, that was kind of the best way to describe it because it is kind of some, sometimes it's hard to always describe like what you're trying to get across, 
but I felt like that was one thing that he said that I really kind of connected with me. Mm -hmm. And can you kind of walk someone through what the consultation is like, like when you arrive and what happens when you go, just so someone might understand? So each of them are different. I guess for Jordan, it was, it was, it was a little more streamlined where I went and got um, basically like some different scanning and 3Ds of like your, your skull and face. And basically, the, and then you go to the console and um, it's got a really nice office in uh, San Francisco. But you kind of go in and basically what you do is kind of sit down with him. And again, I think if you had more prescriptive idea, you kind of maybe like lay that out for him and kind of explain what, like, what you're looking for. But for me, it was more kind of saying like, hey, <laughs> What do you think? What's kind of what, what would what, what would be your advice or what would be your suggestion? And what basically what he did was use those, basically go over each procedure that he would think of, that he was kind of describing, and show me basically what that procedure meant. So I think for me, I a lot of again with FFS, the, one of the things that really bothered me the most was my nose. And I think for a lot of them, they kind of didn't see that as such a big aspect, which I guess was surprising. They saw it more as whether it be like a brow or a chin. And it's just more interesting where like they can kind of see things differently. And then they can kind of describe how that changes like the overall appearance of your face, I guess. And I think that was something that was really helpful. So that it kind of like what he would do is kind of describe each procedure and how that would kind of change the overall appearance of your face and how all those would kind of work together. And then, and then also show like how he uses those adjustments or how he makes those um, assessments based on like, the measurements of your face, which is pretty interesting. Yeah, it really is a, an interesting mix of science and art. And yes. I, I totally agree that I personally also suggest to people when they do their consultation, not to say, I want the nose of this person, or I want the forehead of this person, and really try to just trust that you're going to an expert who's going to know what needs to happen to get the best result. Exactly. And I think like, you can always say if you've like, for me, like, I think the biggest thing, one of the things I was worried about, I guess, from what I'd seen from other, like, again, like on the internet, it can be kind of like a double-edged sword where it's like a lot of information, but a lot of it's not true. Like, I just didn't want to know that was like super small or too like frail. That was the only thing. And I just like mentioned that to him. But again, like you say, I kind of like the reason I went with him is I trusted his kind of artistry and his ability. And that, like you said, is like really let him do what he does best. I felt like it's, it's kind of like going to like, yeah, like an a director or an artist and like telling them what to paint. I feel like it kind of gets in the way more than like providing that more of that inspiration, uh, that kind of understanding. And that's why I got, like, that's, I guess, one of the bigger reasons I liked Jordan more so, I think, just in that aspect. And I also like his like demeanor as well, kind of a little more laid back in California. Yeah, yeah. So once you got done with the consult, uh, can you walk people through what happens after you talk with the doctor? So basically, walk after going through the consults, um, I think we took some pictures. They kind of do like kind of like so each time kind of going back, you kind of do some pictures as they kind of like monitor your progress. Because as you said, as you heal, your face is kind of like slowly kind of like it's not noticeable probably to like everybody, but you'll kind of notice like small changes as your as your continual healing. Um, and then afterward, basically, kind of I went. It wasn't for me a really long decision, but basically, I flew back to LA. I live in LA, and um, kind of like talked it over with my family, and kind of went through like kind of the options, and like you said, just kind of went over the kind of aspects of what I was thinking, based on like different doctors, whether I wanted to see a different um, FFS doctor. But I think for me, again, like, and this is kind of the way I'm a lot of different things. Um, is I kind of, I like to investigate, but I'm gonna to get to the point of someone I feel really comfortable with. I kind of feel like, I, I kind of have that feeling when I know I found someone that I, I like. So it wasn't much longer that I chose him and I basically kind of called him up and basically scheduled my um, surgery date and got everything booked, um, got all the information to kind of have like preparation procedures. And then basically then it was more getting ready for just kind of like being in San Francisco, being prepared for both like kind of the, so I think the, the physical aspect, but also like the mental aspect of going into like surgery and FFS and everything. And you kind of went over this at the beginning, but how long was it between your consult and your surgery? Consult and surgery. So it was. Because a lot of people ask about wait times is why I'm asking. So I'm just trying to get a sense of, of what your time was between when you decided and when you were able to book. I can't be right. 
So I wish I would have got my calendar out and pulled out <laughs> my stuff. Well, it's not a big deal. It's uh, if if you had it in mind, but um, so it's probably like six months actually. I think it was probably about like six months. Okay. Okay. And uh, another question people often have at this point in the booking is um, the question of paying for it. So can you describe like how you uh, got the money or whether you had insurance or, or how that worked? So for, I kind of, again, doing some research online and also talking to my therapist is I found that FFS, um, getting it paid through by insurance can be like very, very tricky in that like, depending on what insurance you have, what coverage you have on and on, on insurance as you, I'm sure you're aware is that just a disaster. So like going through that, it was either like kind of looking through that battle and I kind of like slowly started investigating it. Even if it is covered by insurance, I think sometimes it may be better to go out of network or even just skip it and go out of pocket to go to with the person you want because it's your face and you want That's to do it right the first time. Exactly. And that was basically my kind of thought process as it was like, this is my face. So I didn't want to like, kind of be like, well, maybe it was kind of like, this is kind of the one shot. So like, you don't want to like kind of skimp on like healthcare, you know? Yeah. Cutting corners on something people are going to see every day is not uh, my idea of a, of a good one. <laughs> exactly. So, okay. So uh, now you've got your surgery uh, set up. Can you uh, walk people through what it was like sort of when you arrived in San Francisco through the surgery itself? Yes. So when I did my surgery, it was during uh, the COVID times. So it was June of last year. So it was during like kind of some of the height of COVID. So for me, I had to get there a few days earlier. So it was a little bit more complicated. So I, did, I went to an Airbnb. And um, so basically just got in there. And what I had to do is go to the hospital early, like four days before surgery and get a COVID test. And they kind of like go through like all the admitting instructions. And then you go and do like a final kind of walk through with Dr. Deschamps really. And that's where he really sits down again. You go through kind of like your kind of imaging, go through each procedure and kind of walk through and kind of like walk through your, your surgery plan. So that's kind of nice. And, and depending on like what day, like that can be either like, I think I did mine Friday, my surgery. I did mine like Monday, my surgery was Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And then- How were you feeling at that point? Like, were you nervous or yeah. were you? Um, I was definitely nervous. But I, I think for me, the biggest thing, I was excited too, I think a lot. I was a mixture, like a lot of things, like a, mix, a mixture, like excitement and nervousness. But I think like you mentioned earlier, for me, I had like a calming feeling, especially like as I got closer, because I felt like for me, getting like getting to San Francisco, getting everything ready, getting all my stuff done, that was the stuff I was really worried about to make sure like I had done everything I needed to do to be ready. And then I kind of felt at, at ease to some extent, because then like it was, I had the, my doctor I was confident in and I kind of like felt somewhat you know obviously you're nervous because you don't know what's going to happen and it's all like just surgery in general I think but for me a lot of times because I was so confident in um Dr. D that like I really kind of felt like okay I've done everything I've needed to do you know and now like I'm going just kind of put myself into his hands and like that's kind of how I felt but definitely like it's just it's nerve-wracking I think more so but yeah because you're like kind of waiting and then just you're excited, but yeah, it's nervous because you know you're going to go through like that kind of like a painful process. So, yeah. And so, can you describe the day of surgery? So, the day of surgery, I went in, um, woke up like pretty early. I think I went in closer to like five, five o'clock in the morning. One of the like the first people in, and they had like a nice car that picked you up, which is really nice. So you just have to like just get there. Um, again, it was COVID time, so I had to go by myself, which was kind of like unfortunate. So you like you didn't have to bring, be able to bring like like my mom who's with me um so i went in and basically you go through the admitting which is kind of a pretty normal like process of getting admitted into like the surgery get in and they, they come in like dr d and um he's, a, he's like a physician's assistant can they come in and check on you get you all set up and um and again like at that time like it's it's kind of nerve-wracking a little bit because again like everything's going but i think at the same time like again i felt you feel nervous, but at the same time, I kind of, you know, like, A, I was definitely, like, ready, and B, like, I think, like, again, like, just knowing that you're in, like, really good hands, you feel, um, that's, like, I think the biggest thing for me, because, like, again, like, it is outside of your control, I feel a little bit, and, um, like, the best part about, like, the day before surgery, so, like, they kind of get you in, and then they give you some medicine to kind of calm you down, and then they start wheeling you in, and the best part is, like, I think that's when, like, I kind of got more nervous is when they wheel you into, like, the actual surgical room, 
and didn't get like super nervous, but I could definitely feel, you know, like things pump up. And then like when, they, when you get in those rooms, like they're moving quick. Cause that's, that's like kind of like their office and they're, you know, they're ready. And it's like, they're kind of like game time. And um, I just remember getting more nervous and Dr. Deschamps really comes and kind of like held my hand as I like went under anesthesia. And it was just like so nice and so cute. Cause I was just like getting more nervous and things were like kind of picking up. And as I kind of got more and more nervous, like just having some like kind of comfort you. And that was like the best part of kind of like, the last, that's like the last thing I remember before, like kind of just like going off to sleep. Well, that's really nice. Yeah. It's, yes. uh, and I, you know, I, a lot of people are scared about anesthesia, but I found it very calming too. And uh, can you describe coming out of anesthesia and getting back to your uh, room? So, you know, I think you had an overnight stay probably and then went back. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so I had to stay overnight. So I briefly, like, it just kind of, it was more like for me when I come out of anesthesia, it's like the first few hours are like groggy. Like I remember my mom was there like the first afternoon but I don't really remember a whole lot of it um but like probably so like went to surgery that morning but I don't remember really probably waking up until like that evening and um it was nice because like you have like a nice like private room and then like you have a, a nice nurse that comes and stays with you throughout and I mean it's a little like when you wake up it's a little like disorienting like anything but again like you kind of I had two drains in my in, like the top of my head where they've done like some of the surgery um you're kind of all bandaged up. Um, more you just like, the, the best thing I tell a lot of people, like a surprising thing to me is like, you, I never really felt pain, pain or like I never really hurt. I more just felt like kind of uncomfortable, I would say is the best way to describe it. And just kind of, kind of felt like you just kind of feel like kind of groggy from being under anesthesia. And then like just kind of more kind of like uncomfortable and just kind of like restricted a little bit. And I think that's kind of like the main thing. And then like kind of just, and the main goal for me was just like make it the night and you get kind of discharged the next day. So you get to go home. That was kind of like the main focus for me was like, okay, just relax as much as you can and try to sleep and just kind of hang out. Yeah. One of the things that he does that's different than when I did it is that he tries to get people up and walking very soon because he believes very strongly that keeping swelling down helps with the healing process. So can you talk a little bit about what, what you were instructed to do afterwards in the, in the first few days? Yes. So even in the hospital, um, we would do it as soon as like, I felt kind of like strong enough and, and good enough, which is pretty quick. Cause I feel like I recovered pretty well after surgeries and we would do like a little lap around like the hospital on the floor. And so we did like, I think like two or three of those while I was in the hospital. But then, like you said, that when I got home, like we were in this nice Airbnb and I would just like do these long laps around the Airbnb. And then eventually like as I started feeling just a little bit better and a little stronger doing laps around like the block of the neighborhood, but just really like, I think it's just getting your blood flowing. It just kind of, it's hard to do because you don't feel great. You don't feel like super energetic to get outside and you obviously don't feel like you like <laughs> want to go walk around the block and everything. But it, like, I think it does like when it's like any kind of exercise, I guess you feel so much better afterward. And I think it kind of like kind of picks you up and it makes you just kind of like your body's kind of like helps you blood flowing and things like that. So I think that it can be hard to do. It's can be kind of challenging because you don't feel super, super strong. And you're still kind of like, it takes a, like, someone was saying it takes like even like weeks for anesthesia to get out, especially when you're under for quite a long time. So I, think we're, I was under for like six hours, which is a pretty long time to be under anesthesia. Yeah, for sure. You know, when, uh, when Dr. Osterhout did it, uh, he would take a nap in the middle. So I was under for like 10 yeah. or 12 hours. Yeah. So, oh, wow. so, uh, Dr. Tachant Braley has really lowered the time of surgery, which is obviously very helpful for patients. Um, yes. You mentioned that your mom came with you. Uh, can you talk about the importance of having someone with you? I, I, some people try to do it by themselves. I don't recommend that. And just what, yes. what your mom was able to do to help. Yes. So basically, I, pretty much every surgeon, I think, but obviously Tachant Braley, like they always tell you that you need to have someone stay with you for at least a two weeks that you're in, because I think I stayed two weeks after roughly after the surgery. And then you can kind of go home and kind of you're a little bit more, even then it still can be difficult, but definitely having someone being there to support you is incredibly like helpful, both in like this terms of just like kind of like eating, getting around, like kind of taking care of yourself. Cause just, again, you're not nearly even close to 100%, but then also like someone there to be kind of like an emotional support, something to kind of like hang out with. It can be helpful too, because it is, you are kind of like stuck, just kind of healing 
you're walking, you know, there's just not a whole lot you can, you can't, you know, you don't feel up to like, let's go walk the Golden Gate Bridge or something like that. Like, that's not what you're like feeling it for. So I think just having like someone like that as well, because I think it also can, it's again, like I was explaining to another um, woman who was about to have the surgery, because I find a lot of it, it is physical, but a lot of it is mental, I think too, just going through a procedure, it can be kind of, kind of taxing afterward to kind of like see yourself kind of all beat up. And then it, like, once you start healing, then you kind of see the effects, but it can take a little while. I think having someone that can kind of support you and cheer you on, I think is like super helpful as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, you mentioned that you didn't have that much pain. Can you talk about sort of what sort of discomfort you felt and then also what it was like when you got the bandages off? So when I first went home, I had like kind of a splint on my nose and it went kind of across like kind of like the forehead. So it was kind of like your key and then like a bandage around like kind of my forehead and chin. And so for that first week, that's the bandage you had. And I wouldn't say I had any pain. I just, biggest thing for me, I felt a little like claustrophobic, just like breathing wise. Cause like your nose is kind of like really beat up and they kind of have like the stents in there to hold it into the shape and like form that they want. So for me, that was like the biggest thing that I didn't really like that you just kind of felt a little like, yeah, like kind of claustrophobic. I don't know if that's the best word, but like kind of just like kind of wrapped in, but it never really, really, hurt never really like felt pain in that sense it was just more kind of like full and like you just kind of you're swollen like again like kind of your chin and then obviously my your eyes you're just more for me it's more uncomfortable and more just kind of in that sense and again like at each day it gets better and better and you start feeling stronger and getting kind of back your strength um but then like the next the first visit I got the, the main bandage off which is nice so I just kind of had like the, the nose brace so again, like you kind of get to see more and you get to see like kind of more of the stitching here, which can be a little like jarring at first. But again, it's one of those things where like, and that's like the biggest thing I try to tell people is like, it's just one of those things when you first see when you come out, like it can be kind of jarring because it's like you're in the very early stages and the last time they do different things with like the stitching because it there's a process behind it. And yeah, like it now is now... I'm sorry. I was going to say, I think there's a, there's a trope because of movies where it's like when you get the bandages off that you, you look completely healed or you look like a totally different person. And it's like, you're not going to see this perfect result when all that comes off. It's like, you're going to have blood in your hair and like all kinds of things. Exactly. Exactly. And I think that's the thing is that like, when I first saw that, that was like, for me, the most jarring thing is it's just a scar in the forehead. Like to me, it's just, it's so big and like pronounced and like, you just, that's the main thing I saw. I was just like, oh my gosh. But then like, there's a reason they do that. And then the lace flat. And then like now, like a year later, like to me, like it's barely really even noticeable in a lot of ways. So it's just like one of those things that like at first, and then it, for me, like the hard thing, I was trying to explain it to another woman. And, and like, I, for me, like I couldn't see myself quite yet. Cause I was just still again, like so beat up and swollen and it took, I would say like three or four weeks before I really saw like kind of like my face I felt like I don't know like it was again it's kind of like hard to describe because like I knew it was me and I saw like that you know in the mirror but it was one of those things where like you can finally see it and like and I didn't say like as we start healing more and more it becomes even like I feel like more and more like that like where you kind of like oh okay see that and like it's yeah it's hard to describe you kind of see like more yourself into it well, it's what you were saying earlier. I think the the process of healing is fairly subtle. So you see it every day. So you don't notice it until you see the pictures, you know, in sequence. Then it's like, oh, okay, now I really see it. Yes, exactly. So how long would you say it took for everything to sort of feel back to normal, roughly normal? So back to like normal, I would say probably like six months ish. I would felt like I was pretty, pretty good. And I would say around like nine months, I felt like very, very good. And I think like that was kind of my healing. I mean, like even this, I mean, I would say the biggest thing, the biggest hurdles were like eight to 10 weeks. I felt like the biggest hurdle that's from like six to eight weeks, I felt much, much better. Like I could get around a lot more, do more things. Then after that, then started feeling like the healing was less pronounced because I think it was like less discoloration and it gets more, but like you can still kind of tell because it's very, just with your body, you can, you can notice those subtle little things. And I think, um, yeah, at like the six month mark, I felt like I was like feeling better, but I think even like as it, again, healing, and I, I even heard like your nose sometimes takes almost like a year to fully like heal, heal, which is pretty crazy to think about. 
Yeah. Um, and what sort of change in sensation have you had that seems like it's it's lasting? Um, because that was one of the things I mentioned in the consult is that you can lose potential um, feeling, and that after like my surgery, like even like my chin, I lost maybe like I wouldn't say like a lot of feeling, but some feeling. And even on like my forehead is another area. Like a lot of people mentioned, they lose a lot of feeling, and I definitely lost feeling there. But I feel like I've gained a lot of that back, and maybe it's just a little less um, pronounced. Um, and like even like maybe one just like in like a brow, like there's like some weird places that you kind of like maybe lose sensation or gain like some sensation. It's kind of it can be a little weird just because like you're moving so many different things. Right. But there's uh, nothing like specific. Yeah. It's, well, those are the most common ones, I think, is the chin and, you know, yeah. that I still have both of those as well. Um, but it's not something that bothers me. And I don't really even think about it unless I'm talking to someone in a situation like this. Exactly. Same here. Yeah. Like, it's not something like I ever really think about that often, but occasionally like, like there's like one spot, like in my brow, I might like touch it once and I'll be like, eh, oh, you know, it just feels different. It doesn't, but it's not something I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah. You know, like, right. Uh, so how long after everything, after your procedure, uh, were you able to go back to work? Um, I wasn't working at the time, so mm -hmm. I didn't actually end up going back to work. But like I said, it, to me, like I was mentioned, I was talking to another woman that was about to have surgery. And what I had told her is like, again, that six to eight weeks, you could probably go back again. You're not feeling like 100%, but you're definitely like in this, in the phase of like getting back to work. And I think that's awesome when they kind of release you about to go back to work is at that six week mark. Mm -hmm. And but, um, did you feel like you looked okay to do like a Zoom call like this at that point? Yeah, you're still kind of, you're still definitely swollen and like you might, do like a little bit of makeup to kind of and that's what I was kind of telling her you're not gonna see like it's not the final kind of like um you're not gonna be like the swelling's still gonna be there a little bit you're still healing and things like that but it's less noticeable like obviously you'll notice it because you'll, you'll see it understand it but other people might just kind of notice like a little bit different I guess it's not but but yeah um like some people might notice it I guess from slight details but it's not like so much like right after surgery where it's like oh my you know oh man okay well, one of the things I did is I changed my hair color and got new glasses and those things, plus, you know, the facial surgery, I think was people didn't know that, like, there were so many new things that it, it's like, yes. it's out of the face stuff. That's smart. That's a, that's a, that's a good idea. Um, and so you were full-time uh, when you went in to have this procedure, right? Yes. So, uh, so can, can you tell us about sort of where that fell in your transition, the facial feminization? So um, basically, um, because 2020, I basically like came out and because I did that, I wasn't working at a great place um, that I wanted to stay at and really like come out to. So I, I basically took off work and I basically had like a year where I kind of planned on like a year and a half still kind of in it right now, but like where I kind of planned on like going through the transition, both like again, like kind of the mental aspect and working with my therapist, but then also like planning out surgeries and kind of what I, the way I did it, um, was basically at that like kind of year, year, year and change mark was kind of my plan of like starting surgeries. Mm -hmm. And I kind of did it based on like complexity or what I've kind of talked to people about like kind of the hardest first. So I did like breast augmentation right at a bit, about a year. Mm -hmm. Then not long after I did FFS and, um, and right at that about year. So it's about a year. So that's why I'm about like two years. And where were you in facial hair removal in the process? So I, I started facial hair like pretty quickly after um, I came out. Again, like kind of the help of my therapist, she was really helpful. Like she's like, focus on this and this. These are the things you're like, you'll, you'll thank you with, which is true. So I started pretty like early and pretty aggressively going in as much as possible with electrolysis. Um, and then I kind of had to stop with a lot of different things. And then with COVID and all this, everything kind of went to, and I still have like a little, little bit more that I still want to get like just final little bits left to get taken care of which i'm going to start like next month but i had like i would say like 90 80 90 percent done just because like for me it was like just the best time and i had the time to do it but it's one of the more painful problems i would say that was almost a more painful process than ffs yeah i totally agree and i always tell people they should try to do it as soon as possible especially if you have light skin and dark hair because it shows so much more and uh, it's going to make you look so much younger if you can get rid of that so yes yeah it's one of the it's to me it's one of the hardest things to do but it it brings some of the most 
benefit, like you're saying, I feel like you feel much better. You just feel more confident and things like that. So, yeah, it is a commitment, but, uh, but one yes. more. Thing. So, um, this has all been super helpful. Um, as far as, can you kind of let people know how you feel it's, it's changed how you feel about yourself? Yes. So again, I was explaining it to another woman. I think for me, the biggest thing is, is I just feel more confident. I think in general, I just feel, and it's one of these things where like, it's not always like how much other people's pursue. I think a lot of it, it is like going through my transition and kind of thinking about a lot of things. I think a lot of it is how you see yourself and how you feel about yourself it kind of dictates a lot. I think like of how you feel and how like, kind of the world sees you. And that's been like my biggest thing. I think FFS of all the different surgeries I've had was one of the ones where I just felt like, because it, like you said, it, it is your face and it, like it's what kind of everyone sees and everyone interacts with. And it's like kind of like your first impression. It's really brought a lot of confidence, I feel like. And I feel where before I kind of like, was just kind of nervous, like going around in the world a lot. Like, like you said, kind of being out, you know, uh, as transgender, like just with the face that you feel like you kind of fit in more. And I don't like, I don't always like the, the term of like, um, you know, passability and things like that. Cause I feel like sometimes that could be like kind of frustrating and hard if you don't get it or if you do and different things like that. But just like, it makes you like, to me, the biggest thing is it makes me more confident. I felt like, and even and like, it's funny now, even I've noticed it more and just like now masks aren't required nearly as much getting around. So I find it interesting more like it has been a year, but I feel like it's almost been like, it's almost newer that I'm out and about without having to wear a mask, which is kind of interesting. So it's kind of like almost a new, double revealing a little bit so like going out into the world and it is kind of interesting to see like how you're perceived and how people see you and how you kind of see yourself and it is kind of like a process both of the physical aspect but also kind of the, the mental aspect and emotional as well because it is nice to look back and like see yourself and be like happy and excited where before you kind of like get frustrated or kind of negative toward that yeah it really helped my confidence as well and you know you're in such an unusual situation where i've talked to a few women who transitioned during covid and i think there's actually kind of a bubble of people who did it because they were at home and they're like well you know might as well do this now and um i think it's it's really true what you said about how you feel about yourself is going to dictate a lot of how other people respond to you. So if you're nervous all the time or trying to keep your head down, people are gonna pick up on that, that tension and that nervousness and respond yes. in kind. So, so I'm glad that you're feeling more confident. And yes. um, so if somebody asked you, what is uh, Dr. Champ really like? Like, what would you say? How would you describe him and his demeanor? It's a good question. Um, I find him very like professional, very kind of like um, me drive by, like he dresses very, you know, very like kind of like preppy, like the nice sweater, like again, the office is very pristine. Like it's very neat, very tidy, which I really like. And just kind of like how he does things is very kind of scientific and mathematical. Like just my dad's an engineer and I've worked with different engineers before in a previous life. And just the way he kind of measures things and kind of does things, it's very um, methodical, I guess, in a way. But there is that artistic ability. Um, but I said, like, the more I got to know him and, like, from, like, kind of the, the room and then, like, recovery, I just kind of got, I felt like I got a better, more intimate knowledge in, in the sense of, like, rather than the doctor just, like, being caring and being kind of, like, kind and checking on you the next morning before you get discharged, they come and check on you and all that kind of stuff. So I think that that's kind of, like, my impression of him. But, yeah, which is, yeah, really good. Yeah, I think uh, there's a bit of mystery around him for some people. And so it's nice that you're able to kind of lift the veil a little bit and explain to people your own experience. And uh, with luck, this is going to help some people make more informed decisions. So I hope so. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really grateful that you did this today. And um, do you have any last thoughts or things to add, like in terms of somebody who's on the fence about transition or on the fence about facial feminization? Um. Probably not anything special more just for me I thought I felt like it was just something that like it was a hurdle and it's definitely a challenge to go through. it's a process to go through as, as, as I'm sure you're more than well aware but I just felt like after going like going through that kind of challenge or going through the surgery and recovery which can be a challenge once you get through it it's just to me it just got better and better and better and for me it was just 
it's hard again, like to describe it, it's just, it's super fulfilling just to, again, like just looking in the mirror, like doing different things, and, like getting ready. I just feel much more confident and happy about like who I am and like, not so much in like being like the super unattractive, but just again, just being confident in like who you are and where you're going. Like you said, like just kind of going out. And that was like, for me, the biggest kind of like thing from FFS was just like having that kind of in everyday life. And just kind of, again, like, like I said, just now still kind of experiencing, experiencing that as I go out in the world. Cause like, unfortunately, like just in America and the world, like your parents is so important or such a big part of like how people perceive you. And that for me, it was like a great decision and definitely one that I'm like quite happy with, but I'm, I'm definitely quite happy it's in the, the past though.